Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about taking your tissue culture from this to this. Tissue culture is becoming more and more popular among houseplant growers. It's been around since the 70s and a real better term for it is called micropropagation. It's propagation just like we do on these Monstera albos. We cut the stem and then we root them, but it's done on a very small scale. This is Hartley variegata that I tissue cultured myself. I've been playing with the process of micropropagation a bit and I'm going to unwrap this now. This is a sterile container and you can see there is no contamination on my agar. That's the jelly in which the tissue culture sits. Tissue culture is so popular that plants like this, the peace lily, are products of tissue culture. Almost every single peace lily in the United States is from tissue culture. They're usually grown in Florida and are starting as really baby starts. And this is now spreading to other rarer plants and things like pink princesses, white knights, and all those are typically started via tissue culture. Like every new technology, I think people are really hesitant and scared of it, but there is no difference in it technically than typical propagation. It's just done at a very small level, typically with a lab style environment, so it's clean in the area you're working. You typically need a laminar flow hood to process this so that you don't get contamination on this agar. The method I'm about to show you is not the ideal style of uncovering this and planting it, but I want to give you guys a bit of a demonstration. So this is the first time this jar has been exposed to air in three plus months. So naturally all the yeast and different microbes in the air are going to lay onto this agar. So now it is time that I need to transplant this. And that's what this video is all about. It's about acclimating your tissue culture. So this is in 100% humidity in a controlled temperature. So I keep this right at about 80 degrees, maybe 75 degrees. And with that lid on, it's going to maintain that humidity at 100%. The media also doesn't have much food in it. It has a little bit of nutrient as well as that sugar we talked about when we talked about keeping white monsteras alive. We add in that sugar into this agar. And then it's pH at exactly 5.5 to 5.8 so that these plants can grow, root, and multiply. So here is one of the little baby plantlets. You can see the roots on it there. As I said, this is Hartley variegata and you can kind of see some variegation in there. It's very hard to take tissue culture of a variegated plant and ensure that the subsequent generations will have variegation. And that is why Thai constellation is so popular in tissue culture because it has stable variegation. So I'm gonna get a sterilized cup and then just to be sure, I'm going to clean it out with hydrogen peroxide Make sure there are no bubbles. It's already been washed out and I'm sanitizing it yet again. And then I have some stratum mixed with perlite. And I'm gonna fill a bottom layer into my cup. And typically these are sterilized prior to going into the media with an antifungal. It's important to get all of the agar jelly off of the roots and make sure that you have a white or yellowish root tip on your plants like you can see there. So I'm gonna lay this guy in there and kind of prop him up so it stands up. I'll show you the finished product. So there is my little baby plantlet. I've transplanted just like we do with normal plants. And now I'm gonna finish with perlite on top. So now I have my little plantlet transplanted with perlite on the top. It's super important that the leaves don't touch the stratum or really any bit of the media or even the sides of the container because I found that's how a lot of the rot and degradation of leaves can start. I found these squirt bottles to be super useful in taking care of the tissue culture. This is about a 20% strength of our AB nutrient and I'm going to gently acclimate this plant to this now that it has a little bit of roots. I'll simply squirt in a little bit around the plant making sure to check the stratum and perlite that it's not overflowing and holding a lot of water. We want it to be damp, but not wet. And that's what I was referring to. You want to see that stratum kind of turn a little bit of a color, see that some water is making its way down the side, but you don't want it to be soaking wet. And here's probably the most important part, having the top, the lid, these are parfait cups, and being able to capture all of that humidity inside of this pot. Now this all seems really straightforward, but this is not for the faint of heart. There is a high failure rate in this process. Here is a Tycon that simply came to damping off. I'm probably losing like 10 to 20, maybe 30% of these plants. 
And that's because this process is just so incredibly delicate. It's really like taking care of a brand new baby. That's a great analogy for this. What typically happens in tissue culture is the little shoot will be taken over by a colony of biology. So by fungi or a bacteria or parasite that just goes after that baby plant that doesn't essentially have an immune system. And that's how you get damping off and these other fungal conditions even pythium can attack a plant and kill it off. And that's what creates something like that. Think of this as the incubator. And once I get this newly started tissue inside of here, what I'm looking for is roots to come out of this stratum so I can see fuzzy roots. So here's a great example of that. You can see the fuzzy roots, not browning, but fuzzy roots all along there. And that is on a Tycon that is doing very well. This has been in here for a couple months now. And my process for acclimating them are to keep them in here with the humidity and the temperature around 75 to 80 degrees. You want to keep them warm. You potentially could add a seedling heating mat to the bottom, but be careful with that because it can dry out the media very quickly. And if it gets too hot, it can kill off your babies. I use a sterile bottle of water with distilled water in it to mist these plants. I'll open up the tops and kind of give them a mist to make sure that the humidity remains high. And then once I see those roots, now that I'm seeing on this plant, what I'll start to do is slowly acclimate it to my greenhouse space. What I'll first use is my greenhouse tent. They'll enter the tent without lids on for the next few weeks of their life. And that's kind of in the 80% humidity range. So I'll be able to take these lids off and slowly acclimate them to that. Now, if I didn't have that, or if I'm ever acclimating to this grow room that's at about 65 to 70% humidity, what I'll do is take the lid off and leave it off for one hour. I'll set a timer on my phone and then I'll come back and put it right back on. The following day, I'll maybe open it for about an hour, hour 30. But I'll always keep an eye on the leaves to make sure this plant isn't wilting and or losing water because there's a lack of humidity in the air around it. The leaves have pores on them and they're able to absorb the humidity in the air around them. So that's the importance of keeping this lid on. And then on maybe the third day, I'll go to an hour 45 and slowly go on towards acclimating this fully to this area for 24 hours a day, but I'll always keep an eye and I can always reverse course and go back to two hours from three or vice versa as I see fit for this plant. And the same goes for lighting these plants. In the tissue culture lab, these plants are given very little light and sometimes no light at all. So when you get them and they have roots, potentially the first time they've seen light is in your greenhouse. So with these lights like this, I would never get so close to being a couple feet away. I would really start maybe three, four, five feet away and slowly introduce that light to them. That being the process, that acclimation process of slowly and gently getting them towards that. And that also goes with nutrients. The Leca AB, which is inside this bottle, I'll slowly scale up this amount as I see more roots on here and more growth on this plant, and then I'll slowly give it more light. So the plant photosynthesizes more, produces more roots, more foliage, and slowly becomes something like this. And you can see all the roots in there. And I'm essentially giving this one about 50% strength Leka AB now, and she's really taking off. Once they establish here, then we take them and we put in our aeroid mix or in our Leka and Perlite mix, depending on where we want to end up. Stratum is a great environment for them to get started in, and then they can kind of grow out from that phase and go to whatever media that you choose. I think a final word on tissue culture is to not be afraid of it. It really is as simple as micropropagation. So you're taking very small pieces of stems and you're cutting them and then you're adding in rooting hormones and different hormones to produce shoots. So it's not GMO or any sort of manipulation of the cell genetics or the plant's genetics. You're simply just encouraging roots or shoots depending on which part of micropropagation you're in. Micropropagation is the thing that gives us things like tie constellation, this Thai constellation back here is from tissue culture. We started her at tissue culture four or five years ago, and now she's, you know, four or five feet tall. Don't be worried or nervous about tissue culture. It's probably best for plant prices if we all embrace it, but I would caution people in buying a bunch of tissue culture abroad because you cannot 
verify the variegation and it's very challenging. I've been taking care of plants for about 15 years, 14 years or so, and tissue culture still gives me a run for my money. It's very challenging to create shoots and roots and it's very challenging to acclimate those plants and create plants that can be grown outdoors. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video on tissue culture. Please note I am not an expert in this field and I'm still learning just like all of you guys. So if you happen to know more than me, please share your feedback down below. And if you did enjoy the video, please click the like button down below. It helps us out so much. And if you want to come back for a new video every Saturday, click subscribe and we'll see you next Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. Mm -hmm.